we give you praise we magnify your name we give you glory and honor we worship and adore you thank you thank you thank him for life thank you for health thank him for his mercies and his grace over your life this morning we give you praise Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Amen. Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you for giving us life. Thank you for the abundance of your mercy over us and all ours. Thank you for the ability to be able to live and move and have our being in you. Thank you for being our present help. Thank you for supplying our needs. Thank you for keeping our hopes alive. Thank you for the grace that you have granted us. To you be all the glory. Thank you for delivering us from the hands of wicked men, principalities and powers, wicked spirits in high places. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that is daily speaking on our behalf. We give you all the glory. Thank you for divine guidance. We give you thanks. Thank you for causing our habitation to be an habitation of joy. Thank you for not allowing the plague of sorrow to hit our camp. Amen. To you be all the glory. Amen. To you be all the honor. Amen. Thank you for the grace and the blessings of being able to breathe this morning. It is the gift of God. Take all the glory. Take all the honor. Amen. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Please be seated this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I don't know if anybody is here who can say I'm thankful to be alive this morning. I am thankful and so grateful to be alive. Praise this God. Hallelujah. Amen. So now when, when you see when you know where you are at and you know where you are coming from. And you see that uh, if not for the mercies of God, uh, the story would have been very different. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So many people came the same time you came. Their story is not so sweet. But God has been good to you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. He has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. Amen. He allowed you to go through stuff so that you can become a people of renown, a people strong and mighty. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I decree and declare that the will of God for your life will come to pass. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. All right. This morning we want to go into God's words and I'm sure it will bless you. We have been looking at... Uh, uh, the fruits of the spirit right praise God and last uh, week we talk about the joy fruit right praise the love fruit rather yes the love fruit and I hope all of you are still in love praise God I hope you are still in love amen you are not answering me are you still in love Answer me, are you still in love? Yes, sir. Praise God. Because you know some people, they will enter love and come out. Praise God. I pray, since you said in the presence of God that you are still in love, I pray that you will remain in love forever. Amen. And nothing, nothing will mess that love up. Amen. You know, after... Okay, what's the name of that guy? Uh, 
Amnon, praise God. After Amnon did what uh, he had to do to his uh, sister, praise God. Hallelujah. Initially, they said the Bible said he loved her. He loved her to the point that since she could not get that love, he could not get that love back. He began to fall sick. He was sick of love. He desired that love so much that uh, you know he became sick. But uh, in the process of time, that means he was in love and he would treat that lady like right, right? But when he we now discover maybe he himself did not know that he was not in love, he was in lust. You know, to be in love is different from to being lost. Now, the I'm not playing with words here. I know what I'm saying. If you are in love, you are in love to give. If you are in lost, you are in that thing. You are in quote love to collect. Yes, sir. I get this very clearly. If you are in love. You are in love to give, whether the person did not give you or not. Praise God. But when you are in lust, the purpose why you entered into that thing is to collect, to take something. So that's why the Bible says you are lusting after something that is in that person. You want to collect something from that person. You are lost in after the money of that person. You are lost in after the beauty of that person. You are lost in after the possession of that person. You are lost in after something, not this person, but something about that person. Praise the Lord. So we discover, if we read the scripture, that um, all he wanted was sex. He was lost, lost in after sex. Am I, am I right? Yes, uh, because as soon as he got it, the Bible says he even hated her more than the beginning. He, see, perfect hatred just came from her. Why? You have collected what you want, so you threw away the remaining one. Praise God. Hallelujah. And that became sin for him. Every man is drawn of his own lust and enticed. And after it comes out, it brings forth sin. Sin now brings forth death. Praise God. That shall not be you. Amen. So when we get into friendship because of what we want to get in friendship, that's lost. When we come into church because we want to come and grab something from church, that is lost. Amen. You come into church to come and give God worship. Hallelujah. You come into church to come and know more of God so that you can love him more. Hallelujah. But when you come because, uh, you know, I, 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 I want, I'm looking for something. You shouldn't be looking for anything other than salvation. Yes, sir. Yes. Praise God. Yes, sir. Amen. You, do, you should be looking for anything other than salvation. When you are saved, you will enjoy the blessings of God. Hallelujah. When you go to a church and see that church, they, they help people, for example, or that church, you know, they will, they will give you something, or they will, we have seen all that. Praise the Lord. And then they jump from one church to another and begin to herald themselves. And every church knows that they are this kind of person. Praise God. So, lost sometimes love can look like lost but the spirit of god is able to discern what it is why are you you know i'm hearing god saying why are you into me no just tell me why you are into me you know you need to find time today to go and tell god why you are into him why are you serving him? Tell him. Ask him. Have a discussion with God on your own. And think about it. Why? Don't go, you know, you, God cannot be mocked. Yeah, God, you know, I just think because I love you, God, you know that I love you. Look, if you will keep quiet and let God tell you that that thing is a lie or whether it is true, you will be shocked what God will tell you. 
you know first think very well why god why am i i think this is the reason why and if you discover that is a wrong reason you better just repent lord i repent now i know why i should as the fruit of his spirit praise god so that we can align jesus christ said i know that you people came because of bread i know i know but eat bread it season is bread you came for eat bread there's availability praise god but you know how jesus thought about them a bread follower not people who really love me so the day that bread is not there the person will not come, he will not do, he will not function, he will not be there. Because they came for bread. Praise God. God has bread to supply. You know where the eagles eat, uh, the, 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 the way the carcass is, the eagles will gather. You can't be with Jesus and be, you will lack anything. He said, when I sent you, lack you anything? Oh, he is a provider. So, but don't come because of what he can provide. Don't lust after the provision. Lo love the provider. And he's ready to release it. Praise God. I pray that we, there shall be divine releases for you. In Jesus' name. When we looked at love, uh, fruit, we want to look, I want to put for this uh, first service, I want to put together the fruit of joy and the fruit of peace. Amen. We need to explain and make it clear about these fruits, not just be calling them fruit. These are things, these are things that should be coming out of every one of us. It doesn't matter your placement, your title. It needs, God requires that these fruits should be coming out from us. When it is coming out from us, they are our identity that tells divinity that we are the children of God. Can I hear an amen? amen. Now let's look at this scripture. You know, well, let me quickly read this Galatians chapter 5, which we are looking at this month. Well, let me just take verse 22. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. And he said, And they that are Christ, that is those that belong to Jesus Christ, have done what? Yeah. Then they have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust. So they have defeated lust. Amen. Amen. Then he said, if we live in the spirit, then what? Then we should walk in the spirit. And the evidence that we are walking in the spirit is when we are displaying the fruit of the spirit. So he said, let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another, which are not the way of the Spirit of God. Why do you provoke each other? Why do you envy one another? Why do you... Why? What's your purpose for that? Read with me in Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. Second Peter. Well, we won't, I'm, I'm going to try to put them together because I would not, there won't be enough time for me to really break it properly. And I want to be able to cover the whole fruits this month. Uh, the, the joy and the peace fruit is what we are looking at this morning. The Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 2 to 4 says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God. And of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power has given unto us all things. How many things? All things that pertains unto life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him that had called us. And who called you? <laughs> Are you sure? Who called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises that by these ye might be what? Partakers of what? 
of the divine nature of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. So it is only inside lust that you find the corruption of this world. That is one of the reasons you should not be, be finding yourself with lust. Now you see, you know, when we see the, when we listen, hear the word lust, the first thing that usually comes to most Christians' mind is uh, fornication. Yes, sir. Praise God. Yes, That's the first thing that just come to yes, mind. Yes, sir. It's many things. It is many things. It's not that fornication is just one. Yes. Praise God. Yes. It's many, many things. Envy, all of them. They are just the same family. Praise God. Hallelujah. So corruption is one of those things that are inside lost. So when you are lost in, you are lost in so many, 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 you are, you are pursuing many, many stuff. So you shouldn't get into that lust. Just be real. Stay with God. What did I say? Just stay with God. <laughs> say corruption through lust. But I want to draw your, uh, your attention to that word, the divine nature. Mm. Whereby are given unto all exceedingly great and precious promises that by these ye might be part takers you take your part of his divine nature so so we as children of god we are supposed to be displaying divine nature not displaying our naturalness as human beings it is only when we operate in the realm, walk in the spirit, like we read, that is when we are part takers of his, what? Divine nature. It becomes divine because it is of the spirit of God. So what the world wants to see, or what God and the world wants to see with us, is the divine nature of God that permits them to call us children of the living God. Not just Christian or churchgoers. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, your, that means your nature as a human being who run after loss you know before you were on that side and everything that nature needs to go and now you are now part taker <laughs> praise god you are partaking of his divine nature and you can do that through the Holy Spirit with the evidence of displaying his fruit. Amen. I pray for somebody this morning that your divine nature shall be established. Amen. Because by the time we start operating in this divine nature, we will be turned into another man. Praise God. I, it, it gives me joy these days. I, I, I see the way when we come to church, the way we greet each other. I'm happy. Hallelujah. The way we, we, we talk to each other, laugh towards each other and everything. I, I see it and it makes me, and I'm sure God is happy. Amen. Not that one come, the face is strong, the other one is doing now, the other one is here. Everybody is like, it's like we're about to start war. I'm like, okay. I mean, are we here for war? Praise God. We came to fellowship with the Father. Amen. Amen. Like when a, you know, a father calls all his children together, everybody's laughing, smiling, eating, and it should, that's how it should be. It's like a, a family party not it is it is different from when you call a meeting and you want to set to quarry you know that one will come with his strong face the other one will come with his set blue and say hey i'm the one that did this one and i want to explain no when we come to the father we are coming with joy that's why the bible says we should enter into his presence with what thanksgiving, thanksgiving. his presence we should learn how to approach his presence we should do that with fear and trembling. You know that what that means is that we should be careful how we approach God. Amen. Amen. Something will change for you. Amen. And so, and so the Bible want we want to be partaker of div His divine nature, not to be like one man. Look, stop trying to be like your father or your mother. 
whether you like it or not they are the one that give back to you if they go and check your blood they will see the connection that one is settled already what needs to be settled is now that you are born again what is the thing that you possess that connects you with god what are your dna that connects you with the god of all spirit if they test you by any means are they going to see the nature of god in you and yet you are calling him your father you want to pray say my father which art in heaven god is saying excuse me how am i your father with this one praise god so it is important to validate that we are children of the living god we must have the dna biologically if we go and check it they will know whose father who is your father or and your mother right and so when you are checked praise god how we they know that you are a child of god when this world tests you your friend tests you and things test you will they still on the, will heaven still know that you are a child of god and that's the area that needs to be if, because if it is not if the test is not if the test is not being is not there then you can't say you are a child of god because it is not everybody that is a child of god they are children of the devil the Bible Jesus told them that you are of your father the devil it is his lost you are going to do because they are going in the lost of this world it, everybody who is going after loss is going because it's identified as the child of the devil praise god that shall not be you in jesus name Amen. so i pray that as we are studying these things you this this, this uh, patterns and these fruits i pray that the divine nature of god will be seen in you amen amen and we must take responsibility to display it i've told you you can't fake it it is only divinity that can give back to divinity praise god so you you need you can't you can't you will get tired amen if you try to fake it it will even give you up it will life will give you up because everything will be tested praise the lord i pray that when you are tested you will not fail now man is a natural being natural you know lost and all that stuff our naturalness is nothing comparable with the things of the spirit or even the holy spirit itself you can't compare amen if you look at first corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14 first corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14 he said but a natural man first corinthians 2 14 but a natural man receive not the things of the spirit of god hallelujah a natural man receive not the things of the spirit of god a natural man cannot assess god because god is spirit and those that must assess him has to be in spirit and a truthful one for that matter praise the lord he, and he explained the reason he said for the things of the spirit is foolishness unto him the things of the spirit is uh, meekness uh, this, uh, i beg leave that thing leave that one joy, joy. i beg leave that's not what we're talking about leave bible it is foolishness some will tell you that no yeah we know the bible says so but in reality let's let's just face it in reality when this thing happen we cannot you really can you know now you can i mean you know now <laughs> praise god that is what fool i can't hear you it looks as if the person is really relating with what is, no no i know now we are this how you know we are we are all human beings. and they explain themselves we are all human beings. we are we that's why we know that it is that lost we follow you are human being say with me i'm a spirit being i, am a spirit being. I can't hear you I am a spirit say it convincingly you human being it's all right your humanity is talking about your natural you are natural but we are supernatural beings we must be different from the world if we are not different then we are failed you will not fail it's foolishness unto him neither can he know them 
because they are spiritually understood spiritually discerned yes it is a spiritual matter so somebody who has pitched his tent on the naturalness of his existence cannot understand anything we are saying this month you need to be open to spirituality you must be open to divinity you must be open to something bigger than the natural praise god something that is above the earth and his people we are divine being you are loaded with some things that can make people begin to call you god praise god that's what they were doing to the disciples they were almost calling paul god paul said, ah, leave that. don't do that what's wrong with you praise god but because they saw some things that are not normal about him he's this he's he's not common they don't see stuff like that i think one time snake beat him they expect him to snake beat him and i mean initially they say oh he's a bad man that's why the thing you know some things will happen to you sometimes people that did not like you before they will say god don't catch him you see anna you see anna Praise God. You see, we have been saying it that he's a witch. His father is a witch. His mother is a wizard. Praise God. Now, now, he's going to die now. But when they saw that he did not die, hear me, somebody, you will not die. Amen. When they saw that the situation did not, the, 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 the devil struck, and yet the effect of the striking did not happen. Um, they have the of mind. Did I say, huh? hey, we are expecting that he will swell up, no. but he's not swelling up. Oh. Uh, we are, we are discovering. We, we, we are expecting that we phone. We start coming out from him, but, but he, he, he's still talking. Oh, uh, hey, 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 uh, I, I decree that this world we see you a wonderful person. Yeah. Jesus. Uh, they say this man. They say. Hey, the gods have come in the flesh. Hey, they want to call him and say, relax, which God. Praise God. Relax. The other is only one almighty God. We are to we are small gods on that. So you see now, the natural people, they know what should happen to you as a natural man. The natural people, they know what should happen to you. They know, ah, you know, all the things that is happening to us, you know. Uh, everybody is facing recession, uh, recession. So when you now come and say, ah, my brother, my sister, I don't know. I have problem with recession. Say, hey, it's everybody now. All's normal. I beg my brother, hold your side. Praise God. It's everybody. But when you come to a man of the spirit, say, reset, don't worry, come on, you are going to come out of this. Which recession? There's no recession with God. God does not recess. Praise God. He never change. God will change your matter. He say, I know in Jesus' name. And no, I'm telling you the truth. The person is speaking from another realm. So when you see believers that are not agreeing with the things that you see on earth, just understand they are operating a higher realm. Say with me, higher realm. Higher realm. So if you are if you stay in your naturalness, you cannot assess their realm. Praise God. Hallelujah. I think I was sharing with you, with you, I don't know where I was saying it that I was speaking to one pastor, a lady, and she said, She said, Money is a spirit. You just have to call it. Amen. I said, okay. Talk to me about that. <laughs> Praise God. And we began to discuss about the matter. And I agree with it. So when you tell a natural man that you, you should call money, that money is a spirit, is like, eh? Money is a spirit. Go and tell bank that money is a spirit. <laughs> Praise God. I beg, leave all this your Christianity. Let go and look for money and you walk, 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 walk. Act the person. All the work you have been working, how much has entered your hand? Has it changed your life? No. I mean that I'm telling you that money is a spirit. You call it. See my life. It's better than your own. I pray that somebody here you will have proofs. Yeah. So you can struggle for all you care for all your life, but there are people who are taking just easy steps in the spirit of God and they're getting results. And let me tell you, they will live long. And you will live long too. Yeah. Yeah, the Bible says he has given you all things that pertain unto life and godliness. 
Praise God. Well, let's quickly go to... I'm trying to build a background for you so that you can understand yourselves. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's look at the joy. Let's look at the fruit of joy briefly there. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? Yeah, yes. Now, the joy fruit is nothing different from what the Bible calls the joy of the Lord. Amen. Amen. That word you see, the joy of the Lord, is the joy fruit. The only thing is that this joy fruit is special. Amen. Amen. It is special in its manifestation. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody here, now if I give you one million euro. Praise God. Yeah. Immediately I mentioned that money, somebody smiled. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. That's the power of euro. Amen. <laughs> just, just the sound of one million euro, he just smiled. Say, wow. I'm sure somebody just see one with plenty zero in front. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Amen. If I give you one euro, well, one million euro now, you will, you will be happy. Hallelujah. Yes. You may be happy thinking you are joyful. <laughs> you know, it's possible to be happy and not being joyful. Yeah. <laughs> but that initial decision, hey, ah, you know, you know, you're happy. Of course you'll be happy. Why not? But if it will transcend to the realm of joy, you will sit down and think, God, me. I even deserve this Lord you mean you just changed my life just like that Lord is this me that I never thought I would touch this kind of money in my life I mean my people before me all my generation before me they did not touch this kind of money but father why me me Upon all the things I have done that you did not like, you still. Ah, kasi ende ne mushakata. Look, what manner of love is this? That is joy. <coughs> that is joy. You are just thinking. You are not. That is not lamentation. Amen. That is. You are like. You, you are trying to this what kind of Lord you love me too much this is the kind of thing that will begin to bring tears into your eyes and people say what's wrong with you ah, is it tears of joy I, I can't I, 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 I'm trying to explain it it is in on a joy on unspeakable you you can't explain it. A good thing has happened to you. You are like, ah. praise God. That's joy. Different from happiness. Your joy. Hey, hey, hey. Now I'll go and buy a house. Now you are just happy. That's happy is not joy. Praise God. I hope you understand that illustration. So the joyful does not change. It do, the joy fruit it does not change and has not changed praise God it does not change by circumstance mm -hmm. uh, now let me quickly give you this illustration Jesus came to Jesus um, met a tree and expected fruit from it and since he did not find fruit from it he cursed the tree and then the tree eventually with that right you know that story yes. but in this case we don't know whether it was time for it to some some scholar says maybe it is not time maybe it is not the fruits uh, the tree's fault <laughs> at least fruits more like it has season so just because jesus christ came now jesus was expecting this thing what if it was not a uh, the season for it to bear fruit now wow so what this people are implying is that judge is the judge of all is not righteous why will he come that period where the tree was not bearing fruit and then at the end of the day hukuma destroyed the thing now wow now wow 
praise God. No. The joy we are talking about now, this joy fruit, it has no whether it is rainy season, snow season, winter, any season, drought season, it remains joyful. It, it can manifest in any circumstance. That's the difference. Happiness, when it happens, you are happy. When it doesn't happen, you are down. But joy, in all circum that is how you know that joy is of God. Because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same thing with joy. Joy remains the same no matter the circumstance. So you see that this joy is not cheap. Not all Christians have it. Because a lot of Christians are still circumstantial in their so-called joy. They think they are joyful, they are just happy. To be living a happy life and a joyful life, they are different things. A lot of Christians are living a happy life that is, you know, not regular. When it happens, when it does not happen. But there are Christians that are living a joyful lifestyle. It has no respect for it is available or does not available or whatever. It's just there. They are above circumstances. And it doesn't matter the circumstance. Praise God. So when you operate in this level of joy, no matter the circumstances, you got it. I pray you will have it. Amen. I pray you will have it. Amen. That is why in Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 17, you know that scripture very well, Habakkuk 3, 17 down to 18, the Bible says, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vine. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat, that is, no fruit. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, uh, that is, it will be scattered. And there shall be no herds in the stale, that is, it's empty. He said, yet, everybody say with me, yet. Yet, I will do what? Rejoice in where? In the Lord, I will joy in the God of my salvation. Shout hallelujah. So it, it, the, the joy I'm talking about, this joy fruit is, it, it is not circumstantial. It's not in circumstance that, okay, you know, when it is like this, it's available when it's not like this. When you are in Christ, you live a joyful life. I thought I would hear an amen. amen. When it is available and when it is not available. In the, the joy, the fact that you are saved and you have the one, you know, the one that backs you up, that can see you through all manner of circumstances, you are joyful. If you go through circumstances and you begin to weep, it's because you don't know who is backing you, it's because you don't understand that God is on your case, it's because you felt that God has left you. That's why some people they enter into situation, they say, God, where are you? Why do you allow this thing to happen to me? Praise God. He will not leave you. Amen. Oh, I'm telling somebody, he has not left you. Amen. So it is not second. This so the joy. So what am I saying in essence? Just to kind of round up that particular joy. No matter what you face in life. No matter the conflict you have with whoever it may be. In fact, you have to avoid all those conflicts. Praise God. So the Bible says that much has become it. You just, 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 you know, be at peace with all men. Hallelujah. So no matter what, you have made your choice. You have covenanted with God to live a joyful life. Above the rudiment of this world. Amen. Amen. Even if the devil sends somebody to make you go below joyful, because you are already above, you just saw above the person. What did I say? The, the person is planning to make you unhappy and everything. You just just fly. Praise God. The person is just wondering. He no even see the thing where I do. He no even see what he bless you know you I talk. I tell him say Papa I no correct. He see they sing. Praise God. 
how or he didn't hear me very well. Then go and plan and see how he can say it in front of you. Uh, excuse me, I said that your father is crazy. Oh, is that what you said? All right, okay. All right, that's your opinion. So glory be to God. Hallelujah. Ah, my brother, let's come, let's um, let's dance. Ah, you did not hear what I said. You are a madman. Oh, really? Is that what you think? Okay, come on, let's dance. <laughs> The first thing will just begin to be crazy. I'm like, like, <laughs> Abi, am I speaking Swahili? I pray that your lifestyle will confuse your enemy. Amen. You know, some people say that it is easier said than. Uh, okay, that's what we're talking about. If you want to, it's your choice to display the fruit of the spirit. If you claim that He is in you. He is in you and lives in you and you are walking in the spirit. That is what you must do. That is the proof. So when we say things like it is easier said than done, it is because you don't have the spirit inside of you. You don't have it. That's why you don't think that, uh, you know, if you have it, you will be saying that, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. And I will keep doing more. It should be energizing you to operate in that realm. People who are under that realm, they will say, "Is it the that done?" In other words, if matter come now, we really don't do it like that. Ah, that's can somebody insult you any morning, any morning, any morning after praying, after having a nice worship time, just came the person just said, "I mean, just spoil my day." Eh? So those kind of people can really spoil your day. The, your day that you committed into the hands of God. So when you were praying in the morning and God was saying your day is going to be great, you are going to do well and everything, you did not, was that the voice of God or you were just, it was something talking to you that somebody is able to spoil your day. Let it not be hard again that any man spoil your day. Praise God. Just soar above it. Praise God. Any day that God has, if you have said this is the day that the Lord has made, what follows? I can't hear you. I will joy and rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Because this is the day that the Lord has made. And you believe it. That's why you spoke it. And then you now went to somewhere and your boss said one thing and he just spoiled your day. That means it is not the day that the Lord has a. That's what you are just saying. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> is somebody getting what I'm saying today? So joy is not conditional. Amen. Jesus himself is joy to the. If you look at uh, Luke chapter 2 and verse 10 and 11, let's read that place together quickly. Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2 and verse 10 11 and 11. Let's read it together. Luke 2. If you are there, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's read together. One, two, go. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, behold, I bring to the good tidings of great joy, which shall be all to all people. Verse 11. Eleven together. For unto the born is this day in the city of David, the Savior, in which are Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. So Jesus, that you claim that he lives inside of you, the Holy Ghost, the person of the Holy Ghost through Christ that is supposed to be in you. The Bible says he is joy to the world. Amen. Amen. He is joy to the world. He is good tidings of great joy. Good news, which is the second thing I want to talk about. Praise God. That will usher me to peace. But let's just move ahead. I'm taking them together. Praise the Lord. He, 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 Jesus brought joy. When you were natural, when you were not born again, when you were born like every other man, at that point, you were... You are just an ordinary man. But when you were born again and born of the Spirit, great joy 
was implanted into you via Christ that is in you through the spirit of Christ hallelujah so say with me if you are born again that joy is inside me and you know that joy cannot end the Bible says of his government there shall be no end it doesn't end it's a fountain that does not go dry amen, amen. so that joy is inside you don't let this world tell you that you don't have the joy as a child of God don't let anything that is happening in this world tell you that is a lie you don't have the joy don't otherwise then uh, your salvation is questionable Praise God. Now, let's just quickly go to the subject of peace because of time. Let us look at the fruit of peace now. The fruit of peace. Now, in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 14 to 15. Ephesians chapter 6, 14 to 15. It says, Stand therefore, having your loins gath about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet. Refinish it for me. And your feet. Mm -hmm. You see it now. Your your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So, as children of God. The gospel in your mouth. You, you are moving from one place to another, carrying the, Jesus Christ. Say, go ye into the world, and you go into the world carrying your leg. That time there was no car; you carry your leg. Take the gospel of peace, not the gospel of war, the gospel of quarrel, the go gospel of complaint, the gospel of uh, gossip. No, the gospel of peace. Take it to everywhere that your leg can reach so that you can possess the land for wherever the sole of your feet treads upon. The Bible says he gives you for a possession. Some of you, you think that you just possess because you are talking possession or because your feet is on the ground if the gospel of peace if you are not about the gospel of peace you am possessing nothing what empowers you to possess the land is you being about the gospel of peace there are a lot of christians they want god to settle them in the land but their lifestyle does not depict the gospel of peace they can't speak about the gospel they can't tell no man about the gospel then there is no power to possess because the word of god did not come with enticing words of man it came with the demonstration of power there is power in the gospel i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ for it is the power of god so it is that power that empowers you to possess the land that your feet treads upon Amen. i don't know whether you understand what i'm saying but don't just say, hey, yeah, the Bible says that whenever the soul of my foot we tread upon, uh, 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 I, I, I possess. You that lives a devilish, devouring, deceptive, lying life, troublesome life, after you leave church, how to scatter, deceive, lie, you know, partner with unbelievers.